You know, if you've trusted Christ that he died for your sins, was buried and rose again, you might see yourself as a, as a sinner saved by grace. But let me show you how God sees you. Look what Paul wrote. Dearly beloved. You know, the word brethren in the, in the scriptures, when Paul uses that, brethren, this is what he means, brethren, the dearly beloved. You understand that now that you're in Christ, God sees you in his son. He doesn't see you as the worthless sinner you are. Oh, no, no, no. He sees you as you, look what he says, dearly beloved. You know, you're accepted in his beloved son, Ephesians chapter 1 says. Look what he says, though, chapter 7, verse 1 of 2 Corinthians. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved. Now watch this. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Hey, Christ accomplished at Calvary everything you need to, to do to please God. He, 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 he died for your sins. But Paul says that God, the same way he gave you the option whether to trust Christ or not, the free will, he gives you the free will whether to walk pleasing. When he says cleanse ourselves, he's saying, won't you listen to your apostle? Choose to yield your mind to the scriptures. Have a soft heart and mind towards what Paul says to, you, to us today. When you do that, God will work, and he says, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh. Now, that's, that's the one side, the lasciviousness, the drunkenness, the, the horror-mongering, the adultery, fornication, okay? That's that one side. But also, and the filthiness of the spirit. That's religion. That's religious legalism. When you do that, look what verse, chapter 7, verse 1 says perfecting holiness and you do it in the fear of God you know Paul says to work out your salvation with fear and trembling he didn't say to get saved you have to have fear and trembling he says work it out you once you trust Christ you're saved now you take it serious that's what that means look what he says perfecting holiness you're to mature in the doctrine Paul gives you and you perfect holiness what is holiness It's the word to be sanctified, set apart for his use. See, God created you as a person to serve him. And he cleans you through the blood of Christ. And daily as you take in sound Pauline doctrine, he renews your mind and you, and you pray it. You, you take that doctrine you learn through Paul and you pray it into your spirit. You build that house of doctrine and you're perfecting holiness. Your life begins to be set apart for his use. That's what that means. And it's in the fear of God. Doesn't mean you fear him pounding you when you make a mistake. No, no, that was Israel. They were motivated for good works by fear. When he talks about the fear of God, you do it because it's the right thing to do, and he's worth it because he died for your sins. See, that's the motivation of grace. Go with me to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Paul talks about that little leaven leavens the whole lump. You understand, my friend, bad conduct and bad doctrine. Those are the things that a, a believer can fall into. But when you stick close to the cross of Christ, and when you stick close to the Apostle Paul and what he writes today, you know for sure you can't fall away. Let me say that again. When you understand who you are in Christ, and you're only going to find that out through Paul, when you, make, when you take serious the 13 books of Paul and you get that information and you rightly divide the word of truth, you know you walk pleasing to God. Okay? Look what he says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Paul says, to study, to show thyself approved unto God. Okay, my friend, if you have a King James Bible, that's the only Bible out there that's going to tell you to study the Bible and how to do it. Look what he says. A workman, that's a skilled laborer, that needeth not to be ashamed. Do you want to not be ashamed before God? You know, if you're in a religion, obviously you want to please God. Well, this verse will tell you how to not be ashamed in your service to God. Watch what he says. Rightly divide the word of truth. You see, my friend, when I talk about the key to understanding the Bible, that same key to understanding the Bible is the key to pleasing God today. 2 Timothy 2.15, to understand the Bible dispensationally. It's not enough today to be scriptural. It's not enough today to be biblical. 
you have to be scriptural, biblical, dispensational. You need to have the word rightly divided, time passed, but now the age is to come. Genesis through Acts, time passed. Romans through Philemon, our obedience today. We can learn from Genesis through Acts. We learn from Paul and obey him. And Hebrews through Revelation, the future, we learn. Watch what happens when you don't. Look at the next verse. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. You know what, what God says? God says that when men don't rightly divide, he calls them profane. You know what profanity is. When someone's using profanity around me, it's the hardest thing to hear. Well, imagine when men use God's word, but they don't rightly divide. They don't magnify Paul's office. It's profanity in his ears. And vain babblings. Vain means empty and useless. They speak words, and they're vain, empty, useless. They can't help you in your Christian life. They, they go back here and put you under the law or put you out there, and your Christian life has no power. Vain, empty, useless. And guess what happens? They will increase, verse 16, unto more ungodliness. You know, the term ungodliness is not the, the lasciviousness of the flesh in the Bible. Ungodliness is going against the truth of God's word. It's religion. And the more religion they give you, the more they're going to give you. It's just a constant downward spiral of sin. No, get out of that now. Rightly divide the scriptures. Look at verse 17. And their word, the, these men who use the Bible but don't rightly divide, and their word would eat as doth a canker. That word canker is like our word today, cancer. And you know why you go into the doctor and they find that little bitty cancer and they cut it out? Because a little cancer will leaven the whole lump, doesn't it? It starts out small and it'll just increase till it can ravage your body. I had a family member die of cancer at a young age. And it just took over his body. Well, that's what the word of God, without right division, without understanding Pauline truth, will do to your Christian life. It'll destroy you. Of whom is Hymenus and Philetus? Oh, Brother Hymenus and Philetus, they went and they preached the Bible, but they didn't stick to Paul's message. Verse 18, who concerning the truth have erred. I'm sorry, verse 18, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. Oh, my friend, we're, 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 we're going to be ending this study. But those brothers, they took the truth of the rapture that Paul gave to the saints, and they erred. They said some things. They didn't put it on the chart right. And they told the believers the rapture had taken place already. That's the resurrection. And the next thing on the, on the, on the chart here is the wrath. So if somebody's coming to preach and say, you're going to go through the wrath, well, overthrow your faith as a believer because God has not appointed us to wrath. No, my friend, it matters what you believe and who you believe. And today, in the dispensation of grace, if you want to know what God is doing, it's the Apostle Paul and what he writes. You can learn from all the Bible. You come join us. I'm Ron Knight, unlockyourbible.com. I can send you free material. But we, we here have, we have an assembly in the Twin Cities, Twin Cities Grace Fellowship. You call me. You come here. You can enjoy the Bible with us. We, we study all the Bible, rightly divided. It makes sense. But if you're not saved today, you know, you need to, you need to get saved. You know, has anyone ever loved you enough to ask you, if you were to die this moment, do you know for sure where you'd spend eternity? That's the greatest question a man can ever answer, a person can ever answer. There's not another question more important. Well, the Bible says that if, if you don't know for sure that hell and a lake of fire, that's your eternal home. You don't want to go there, do you? Well, God doesn't want you to go there, and neither do I. God sent his son, Jesus Christ, the perfect one, the son of God, died on the cross to pay your sin debt to God. And if you trust that, just that alone. Don't trust your words. You don't have to be water baptized or go to church. Just trust him in your heart that he died to pay for your sins, was buried and rose again the third day. God will save you right now. If you've made that decision, give me a call. We want to get some materials so you can know who you are in Christ. Or, in fact, join us, okay, at our, at our Bible studies twice a week in the Twin Cities. Well, my friend, if, if you don't know this truth, don't harden your heart towards the word. God is speaking to you through his word today. God wants to see your heart resting in his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we're here. Well, we're coming to the end of this study, my friend. I want you to join us in the next few weeks in our study in the book of Galatians.
But until then, I'm Ron Knight saying, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.